welcome. This is the Monday, November 23rd meeting of the Administration and Public Works Committee. I find that we have a quorum and we can begin. We'll move right to uh, item three, which is the approval of the minutes of our regular meeting from November 9th. Approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Alderman Braithwaite, are you ready to do bills and payroll? Uh, sure. Thank you, sir. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to move item uh, A1, uh, Evanston payroll through November 1st, in the amount of dollar amount of $2,581,399.48. Uh, would you also like me to move item A2? Sure. I'd also like to move uh, for, for action item A2, uh, fiscal year 2015 City of Evanston bills through November 24th of uh, 2015 in the dollar amount of $4,925,231.66. Is that it? Rainey. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm, if you all read the bill's list responses, um, you'll know that I've objected to things like tables and painting and refinishing an bamboo floor and office furniture for the new health office. I object to those being considered capital improvements and from coming from the capital account because they're not. They're just just plain not capital expenditures. And so I I really think our staff ought to reconsider um, sticking these kind of items in our capital budget. Just makes no sense. They're not roads are capital, buildings are capital, um, new roof is capital, an entire electrical system or plumbing system is capital. This isn't it. Doesn't doesn't. Uh, comport with the small test. I think we should. Uh, <clears throat> Alderman Rainey, yes, uh, we will review the uh, account numbers in question, um, our capital account numbers, but to your point, I will uh, um, look at moving them from the uh, capital improvements fund into the uh, general fund. You, you had a page number, and I, w I would like to check that. Well, I mean, they have the. It, thank you. Were they were they all in the same category in the well, same? Well, they're all the same number. Six okay. Five, five, one, five, yeah. And five six two five. Are the account numbers? Okay. I mean, I don't have my question. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I I don't want to hold up payment for them. But, but I think it's an accounting procedure that can be moved from one place to another. It should be without a problem. Well, let's uh, let's. And uh, if I if I just. And and the reason I, I understand we will address it. The reason that they also are um, in in many respects charged this way as we did it, um, put together a. Um, facilities contingency fund in the capital improvements fund and so it's being charged there so I understand your st your statement but that's why but, they were charged there but a contingency fund for capital improvements should be the furnace blew up the boiler blew up the roof something fell on the roof and put a hole in it so we have to replace the roof not oh we got to paint a wall or nope oh we got to buy a table those that's my argument so uh, they've been moved for payment and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Moving Did you back get an to. Action on that? Pardon me? Just we're going to look into it. That's yeah, it? That's, yes, yes, right. Are you right. fine with that? Well, Mr. Lyons is going to resolve the. Right. And that's done. Okay. I plan to bring up something later, so I just right. want to make sure. Great. Right. Let's move back to item number two, which is the Paint Evanston Plows Contest Award winners, the contributors and winners, and Director Stoneback and Mayor Tisdall will lead us through this part of the agenda. Welcome, Mayor. And fans. Yeah, and if you want to come up here. Have a seat uh, right here where the Mayor is directing you. Thank you. Welcome. 
Have a seat. Find a free seat and make yourself comfortable. Come on in. So uh, for the past several years, Evanston has had an art contest to paint plows, the snow plows that get put on the trucks. And if you haven't had the opportunity yet, you can go into our back parking lot and all the trucks are parked out there with the plows on them. So you can go out and see all the artwork that was uh, completed. Uh, and each year we come up with a theme for what we want to, how we want the plows to be painted. And this year was along our sustainability line as usual. And uh, the topic this year was to think outside the bag. And we want to recognize all the students and the teachers that uh, participated in this. And if we could have the, any children that are here from Shoot Middle School come up, we'd appreciate that. Anybody? Nobody from Shoot is here. Is anybody from Dahl's Elementary School here? Would you want to come up, please? Okay, tell us your names. Boaz. Caleb. You each only have one name? Try again. Boaz Lieberman. All right. Caleb Lieberman. Perfect. All right, guys. Thanks. Smile for the photo. All right, congratulations. Is anybody here from Haven Middle School? Haven Middle School? Anyone here from Nichols Middle School? No Nichols. Anybody here from Washington Elementary School? Nobody from Washington Elementary. Anyone here from Willard Elementary School? Okay, come on up. your names. Maisie Peter, Tegan Kenny, Casey Kenny, Olivia Bravald. And who would you be? Jerry Success, an assistant uh, principal. And our, our teacher is also. Sorry, it has to be. She's taking a picture. Oh, wait, where? Oh. Jemiah. Jemiah, how can I miss you? How about your, your last name? Bravald. Thank you. And then here's our art teacher. Hi. Okay, Jemiah, you can hold the there you go. All right, everybody smile. One more, one more for the city records. Okay, and those were all our participant awards, so we thank everybody that did participate in that. Uh, as you know, we have a, a contest where we uh, put it up on the computer or, or on the website, and we ask people to vote for uh, the, the best-looking plow, and that is called the uh, Evanston, Evanstonian Award, and that is going to uh, Pope John 13 Schools. Anybody here from that? Okay, so nobody's here for that. And then the mayor selects two plows that uh, she prefers. And so uh, we have Lincoln Elementary School. Is anybody here from Lincoln Elementary School? Come on up. Come on. Anybody from Lincoln Elementary? Nobody from Lincoln Elementary? Is there anybody here from St. A School? They also... Kinsey McGuire. Okay, and look that way because then you'll be on together your face. Thaddeus McGuire. Will Bodine. Zion Lawazo. Rowan Renier. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Congratulations. Here, Ron, you hold that. And you want to hold the plaque? There you go. All right, kids, look at me. Right here. Perfect. All right, smile in there. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> okay, did you, did you want to say something to your art teacher? Uh, yeah, we, we hope our art teacher feels better from her surgery. Okay. All right. And then there's one last award that goes to uh, the Best Theme Spirit Award, and this is the one that represented uh, what we considered to be the most in line with the uh, Think Outside the Bag, uh, and that is going to Lincolnwood Elementary School. So if they wouldn't want to come up, please. Okay, say your names and look that way so you'll be on TV. Michael Pollack. Sam Molitor, Sydney Rubinick, Oliver Finnamore, Laura Peterson, Andreana Moore, Brandon Choir, Jane Fabry. All right, to get everyone this time. Can you all come up more towards the center here? And away. Let's come over come this over way there. so we're not. Okay. Oh, and wait, and the art team. I'm Monica Vick. Congratulations. And again, we want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, and if you want to go back to the room that you're at, there are some more refreshments. And then each one of you will get a certificate for participating. So again, thank you very much for coming. And I signed every one of those, so pick them up. <laughs> reception too. As the mayor escorts the artists out of the council chambers, Alderman Miller, can we, would you please take A3.1? Move approval of item A3.1, which are various contracts for water treatment chemicals for fiscal year 2016. Uh, the first is with Univar USA for $148,844.50 for aluminum sulfate. The second is with Alexander Chemical in the amount of $35,063 for chlorine. Third is with Mosaic Fish Hawk is uh, for $123,600 uh, for fluoride. Fourth is with Polydyne Incorporated in the amount of $19,200. $19,200 uh, for Polymer, and the fifth is with Keras Corporation for $91,744.80 for phosphate. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Alder Woman Rainey. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, A3.2 uh, requests approval of purchase of insurance renewals for property, excess liability, and excess workers' compensation for fiscal year 2016, um, excluding workmen's comp uh, 531,440, including the workers' comp, its budgeted uh, total amount would be 620,000. It's been Second. moved, seconded. Alderman Miller? 
So, quick question. I don't know if the legal department can answer. What's the largest claim that we've ever paid out? I'm just wondering what the, the upper limits of our excess have ever been. Sometime, uh, Alderman Miller, in the early 2000s, there was a claim that was paid out at approximately $5 million. That was before the city became self-insured. Since the city became self-insured in the last six years, the largest claim paid out was a $1 million. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Alderwoman Holmes? Um, three, thank three. you, Madam Chair. A3.3, AP, A3.3, approval of the contract with BOLA con contractors for Sheridan Road Water Main Lining, bid number 15-60. Staff recommends the um, to authorize the city manager <coughs> to execute a contract in the amount of $3,767,440. Funding will come from the water fund. Second. Any questions? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Alderman Braithwaite. Three, four? Sure. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to move item 3.4, uh, 3 the approval of the agreement with the Youth Job Center of Evanston, Inc. for 2015-2016, uh, Building Career Pathways to Sustainable uh, Employment Program. And that's uh, in the amount of 80000 Second. Alderman Rainey? Yes, um, I'd like to know how do the people this is targeted to know about this? Do they have to be referred or can they, do we advertise it to various communities so that they know? Right. Welcome, Mr. Brown. Because this is an opportunity yeah. that shouldn't be missed. Yes. For the yes, um, Alderman Rainey, we do u utilize the um, city's um, $36,000, I mean, 36,000 36, member email list. Um, the Youth Job Center of Evanston itself has its own um, advertisement for the program, and the city uses its outreach team to distribute flyers in the community at community-based organizations and businesses. Good. Thank you. And you work with the high school? And as well. also it's distributed at the high school, but it's uh, the program itself is for 18 through 25 years. Right. Mm -hmm. I have a just a quick follow up question, uh, Mr. Brown. Uh, the dollar amount is 80,000. Uh, you talk about highlights and results within the packet, but I would just uh, like to use this as an opportunity for you to share the successes of last year and why you feel this program is so important. Um, this program is beginning its uh, fourth year um, of success and one of the things that um, we like to highlight is the fact that almost uh, most of the participants in the program are employed permanently once they complete the on-the-job paid training and that's one of the highlights of the program across the country is that individuals, the employers are getting a chance to test individuals, individuals are getting a chance <clears throat> to test out employers and um, basically they can find matches uh, with one another. But the other uh, component of the program is that individuals are given an opportunity to uh, obtain um, credentials um, in a variety of areas. Uh, for example, someone may be looking at foods, the food service industry, come to a town like Evanston, get a food uh, safety certification, and it allows them to get uh, permanent employment. And um, it leads to further, um, uh, further uh, advancement in their career path. And so these programs have been um, extremely successful across the country. And when we started it here three years ago, uh, we started off with the same amount of success. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Anything else you want to add? Uh, yes. Uh, I want to introduce um, um, <coughs> Ms. Karen. Um, how is, uh, Demarest. Demarest? <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me for that. No Karen Demarest, uh, YJC. Thank you so much for the support. It's very beneficial and it's a wonderful program. And in the last year, um, we've actually grown numbers and have put more people to work in permanent positions. 
Mm -hmm. um, one of the interesting things, Mr. Brown and I exchanged messages, and thank you mm -hmm. for providing additional information today, that um, when we have excess funds, it gets put back into the program so that we bring more, more participants more. into mm -hmm. the program. So although the proposal suggests that it's uh, up to 15 participants in the program, it could exceed that depending upon how these resources are used. That's correct. And in the last year, it's actually been 24. Mm -hmm. right. That's great. So we're getting more bang than we thought for this buck. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, this one's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Alderman Miller? Move approval of item A3.5, which is an increased allocation with safe built to provide backup building inspection and plan review services in an amount uh, in a not to exceed $40,000. Second. Alderman Rainey, is your question for this agenda item or the last? No, you right. didn't turn it off. All right. Thank you. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. A36. Please. Uh, approval of emergency engineering services for the police and fire headquarters data center in the amount of $24,500 with McGuire Engineers. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Alderman Holmes? A3.7, approval of the emergency UPS pre-purchase for police and fire headquarters data center um, in the amount of $40,850 from Kramer Data Power Incorporated. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. A4, Alderman Braithwaite? Uh, yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, I'd like to move item A4, approval of the change order number one with, uh, is it Havy Communications for emergency lighting and sirens uh, in the amount of 28, or not to exceed 28,904, and this is for action. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Alderman Miller, street sweeping. Move approval of item A, item A5, which is revisions to the street sweeping schedule. Is there a second? I'll second. Alderman Rainey. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm completely opposed to going to citywide once a month street sweeping. When you go down a street in the city of Evanston, and I have several in my ward, where there is trash and obviously people are cleaning out their cars into the gutter, um, bottles, cans, paper, litter, et cetera, those streets need more than once a month street cleaning. I'm not capable of personally educating people on why they shouldn't be throwing their crap on the street. Um, it's my thinking that adults should know better. Um, however, it happens, and I've been fighting it for years. We've gone from twice a week street sweeping on most all two-sided streets in this town to once every three weeks. Um, in some cases, that's fine. In some cases, it's not. And I've been doing a very random, unscientific poll about who thinks we could go to once a week, once a month, and who feels we should do twice a month. And it, it's interesting. It's almost parsing so that everybody on one side of Asbury wants one thing, and everybody on the other side of Asbury wants the uh, another thing. But I'm, I just don't think that we can blanket say that we're going to go to once a month street sweep, even though we're going to extend the, the duration of the, the time that we're sweeping. So um, if I can't get some agreement to allow for twice a month street sweeping, then I would like to hold this until we can have more of a discussion. Otherwise, I would certainly like to be exempt from blanket once a month street sweeping. Because I'm the only I'm the only ward that borders the city of Chicago and believe me I attribute some of my litter <laughs> to Chicago. 
Maybe there's room for some fine tuning in the I, plan. I, City I'm Manager Bob I'm asking to be exempt from this. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, good evening. Uh, staff has talked with Alderman Rainey, and uh, we'd be happy to talk with Alderman Rainey further over the uh, next three weeks to uh, uh, make some adjustments in her ward she thinks is appropriate. Uh, as we've talked, I think this is the second time or third time this has been before the council in recent months. Uh, our goals are, are, are several fold. First and foremost, uh, to make sure that we have signage that represents the uh, accurate schedule, whatever that schedule may be. Um, also to make sure people understand the snow or route uh, uh, parking bans and also finally to understand the 311 is a resource for them. So, Madam Chair, uh, I, I think if you'd like to hold this in committee or move it forward to the council and we can uh, work with Alderman Rainey and uh, either way you do it, uh, we'll, I think we can come up with a plan that will make sense and still meet the goals uh, that staff has outlined uh, several months ago when we first came to you with this. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Holmes? Well, I was just going to say that the parking committee take into consideration um, those streets that might have, and I'm sure it's not all of Alderman Rainey's wards that would need sweeping <laughs> right. twice a month. So there would be some exceptions for some streets. Was that taken into consideration? Uh, again, Alderman Holmes, uh, staff spoke with Alderman Rainey uh, uh, about this. As she felt it was important that she speak with her, your colleagues about this tonight. I, I, I think we're on the same page. It was just a matter of having it come before the committee this evening. Mm -hmm. Alderman Braithwaite. And, I, and I'm looking out to Alderman Wynn because she did reach out to me uh, to ask if I had any questions in the time. I was just focusing on the signage, not on the frequency of streets. So I just want to make sure that I'm paying attention to the frequency of streets and I want to be able to take a little bit of time and take a closer look at that. Um, and so if, there, if it's all right with members of the committee, if we can just hold it. I mean, I'll, I don't know if I need to second a hold, but... I will pay close attention to that and then give the feedback to staff before we give it a final vote. So I, I had a, a one question, which is, what was our timing on incorporating new signage? We uh, were hoping to do this before the snow. Uh, we came to you, I think, in early September with this and uh, received a feedback that it required additional discussion. So we went to parking and transportation. We've met with some of you individually about this. So uh, nothing will change for the, uh, for the snow season. So our hope is, is that if we can get some finality before the end of the calendar year, we'll be able to fabricate the signs and have them up before uh, street sweeping would begin in the spring. All right. So is the better discussion than to keep it here at um, committee? Three weeks from now, Alderman Rainey? Um, could I speak first? Um, I hope that you remember that every time this has been raised, I have opposed once a month street sweeping on a blanket basis. So it's not like I called up the city at 3 o'clock this afternoon and said, I don't like this. I have been opposed to this ever since. Um, and staff has reached out to me, Jim has, Mayworm, and I, but I, I I can't configure the streets. I, I mean, it's above my pay grade, quite honestly. But I can tell you where those areas are. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I find it very interesting that the entire city council, other than me, thinks that once a month street sweeping is okay. I, I just, I didn't know that. So, and I heard that today. So that, I think that's interesting. And Alderman Rainey, members of the committee, I think it's a mix, and I, and I think the mix, part of the mix is making sure that our residents understand when streets should be swept. Um, I think the challenge when we have the street sweeper go by and there are cars there, um, if we ticket but don't tow, uh, then the, the debris does not get picked up. And I know that Alderman Wynn, who I spoke with earlier today, uh, that was one of her biggest concerns is that because of the system that we have, uh, many of the cars in her ward do not move, and so the street sweeper is unable to pick up the, the debris. And the feeling with the new system is we have better compliance with our residents, then the streets get swept uh, more completely. So. Uh, this is certainly an issue that the city of Evanston has dealt with for a long, long time. Um, we want to, at the end of the day, make sure the streets are clean, that the storm drains are clear. Uh, that's the whole goal of this. Well, my, in my ward, it's a little different in that people, I agree with you, the signage is a serious issue. Mm -hmm. And in my ward, people always move their car, whether they're street sweeping or not, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. 
because they see the signs and they're not clear. So that that's not the problem, I don't believe. I believe that there's more intense use and more cars and more trash in certain neighborhoods than others. And, you know, people got used to twice a month and then they tried to get used to once every three weeks and there are some neighborhoods that need it twice a month. And I... Well, we always have the option, though, of, like, for instance, um, sometimes on Church Street after a football game, there's just lots of trash. But so you just, well, yeah, but you just call. <laughs> I mean, so would that option still be there? I would assume. Yeah, but then you have the issue of, well, church, is, church might be a bad, no exactly, yeah, because there's no parking on church, so you wouldn't have to worry there about that. There is parking on church. What are you talking about? Yeah, well, you're talking about post. the stadium, I, though. I, I mean, I, and there's space. parking. But most people only park there during games, so there are plenty of opportunities. My point would be there are plenty of opportunities for a street sweeper within a 24-hour period. But if there's parking there daily, there. if you drive by, there's parking on church on the north side. Yes. Daily. Right. But so I mean, I, but all I'm saying is, after a game, and and I'm and I'm sure probably after some kind of event or something on Howard right. Street, that there's much more litter. And it's it's a phone call. That's all I'm saying. If, if, if that option is there, then, you know, it seems like then we were beating a dead horse. That's yeah, I would I'm agree saying. with you. But if you don't have the signage to let people know when they're going to come, then that's when it becomes a bigger issue. And, and Alderman, so, uh, members of the committee, uh, I think one of the things Mr. Mayworm, who is here, who could, could certainly help with this, um, we've taken kind of a different approach to areas that aren't properly swept and Alderman Rainey's been great about this uh, really making us aware of this we will then uh, sign a special uh, sweeping when we need to um, in order to get it done so uh, issues are issues and we we work through those issues what we're trying to do is come up with a better way citywide for people to understand when sweeping takes place so that they can comply and that it cuts down the needs for doing these special things Certainly a big diversity, densities are all very different, and we're happy to work with Alderman Randy and any of you if there are particular areas uh, that require twice a month. Again, the beauty of twice a month versus every three weeks is we can come up with a sign that, 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 that explains mm -hmm. that. So as long, uh, from a resource perspective, we're not looking at the entire city um, every two weeks. If there are certain areas that are more high intensity that we need to do that, we can make a sign, we can make a route, we can make it clear for people and move forward. It seems to me that any schedule can be flexible enough to accommodate specific needs and still be clear and predictable and minimizing convenience to residents and, and get that, the job and done. And, and get the job done. you so, said it. That's, that's really the goal here. So let's just keep it in committee for further discussion in three weeks in December, and by then we'll have resolution? Mm -hmm. Let's get it done. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So A5 is being held over to our next meeting. Alderman Rainey, A6 for you. And it should be noted that there's absolutely no issue with the snow removal issues. I mean, that right. that's mm -hmm. not the issue. Just the street the, sweeping. Just extended right. street sweeping March through December. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right. Remind me which one we're on now. A6, one, uh, please. A6. A6, A6, please. The budget. A6. Communications. Um, resolution 104 R15 fiscal year oh no fiscal year uh, 2016 budget of the city of Evanston and the total amount including debt service and pensions 304 million 494,806 dollars. Is there a second? I'll second for discussion. Mm -hmm. Alderman Braithwaite. Did you want to go first? Oh, uh, just one of the issues that I had, uh, Madam Chair, and, and I had made it a point during our last budget memo, and uh, it was a lengthy discussion with uh, staff and, and city council regarding a neighborhood improvement fund. And from that discussion, uh, I remember the words that it's clear in terms of the direction to staff. And so I'm a little bit annoyed and uh, perturbed right now that A, that didn't happen in terms of neighborhood improvement fund for the Main Street, and then I wasn't notified until this evening. Alderman Grover, members of the committee, um, the issue that Alderman Braithwaite raises uh, was a discussion at the council, if I recall, and uh, he asked how much the 
funds would require, and uh, I think it was Mr. Lyons $20,000 a year, and there was no further action by the council. The council did request that the capital budget be amended to include uh, Main Street uh, infrastructure projects adjacent to the uh, Main Street Shopping Center on the far uh, west end of uh, the city, and that has been done. And if the council wishes to pursue uh, neighborhood improvement funds, I think that's a, uh, an issue separate from the budget and uh, um, should be appropriately agendized. So uh, uh, the capital fund increase of 75,000 is, mm -hmm. is for the, the design Main engineering of Main Street? Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, I will, my question to you, Marty, was very specific, is to understand the numbers behind it. And I asked specifically, I didn't want to make a decision or ask city council to make a decision based on concept, what would it look like, similar to the plan that's, in, that's been in place? And I don't have that information. And, and Alderman Braithwaite, as we discussed at the last meeting, um, it would require the city council to uh, uh, direct staff to draft an agreement and then the city council to approve such an agreement and then to allocate the funds. So in order for city council to ask for that, wouldn't we want to have the information, city manager? And Alderman Braithwaite, you asked how much it would it cost and it was $20,000 and that was the question that was asked and it was the question that was answered. Uh, there was additional discussion regarding infrastructure um, and Certainly, I think at that point, the council felt that that was an important infrastructure project separate and apart from right. the neighborhood improvement fund. So right. uh, there was no additional action requested on the neighborhood improvement fund. The council directed staff to include in the capital budget uh, funds to move forward with the uh, capital projects adjacent to the center, which we have done. I, I think, think one of the issues, on the, uh, yeah, I think, don't you think one of the issues was that and I remember the discussion in terms of, and you were talking about the main street right, area, right. that there was $200,000 that has never even been used Correct. over the 10 years. Correct. And so during that discussion, and you, well, well, but, yeah, please I, go ahead. You let I me finish. Yes. So we we're talking about infrastructure and capital needs that at $20,000 a year would take, and I can't even remember who made the comment how many years it would take to do. A long time. And we decided that we wanted to m make sure that those capital needs got taken care of in the uh, CIP this year. And that was the instruction. That's the way I remember it. Right. That's, that's what I remember. Right but it had nothing to do with setting a new total for um, neighborhood Fund. Right, and so you're you're correct. And I thought during the conversation, I made a clear distinction between infrastructure needs and neighborhood needs in terms of projects for our neighbors. And so I'm very right. aware. I you mean, did. we're all aware that you know streets, sidewalks. We talked about uh -huh. the projects. Talked about the the um, entry in, in the mall. We also talked about the need for sidewalks along the main street corridor. So we've identified all those. But in addition to that, I've had ongoing ne uh, meetings with our neighbors regarding probably the most recent conversation is when we added the, uh, approved the new gas station in front of uh, Main Street. Um, and during that time, I made reference to a neighborhood improvement fund just to assist with lighting. I mean, the, the point that I'm making is not so much whether or not discussion, it's just a simple request that I made to staff and not that request not being followed up. And that's where, that's right, where I'm that's upset, not right? correct. You have made the request. There was document provided at the last council meeting. We had the discussion. We provided the information again. I think the next request, though, is a reference to back to this committee specifically related then to the Neighborhood Improvement that's Fund that's and what's the, what's the next step. That's correct. So if you want to do that, then, yeah. then it'll pop up on our next agenda for discussion. That I don't have. That I, I was very clear with that, City Manager. And, and, and Alderman Braithwaite, I disagree. Well, if I had it in front of me, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. Would that be accurate? No, because you asked the question and the question was answered. Again, so we just Alderman, didn't follow up and I'll let you, since he can't hear it from me, maybe he'll hear it from you, Alderman Grover. So maybe you can ask the question directly to the city manager and I'll get the information I need. You wanted a referral for, for discussion item on Neighborhood Improvement Fund. That is correct. And how that might be handled going forward. That is correct. Okay. And we'd be happy to bring that back. And there are issues on Central Street. There are issues on Chicago Avenue. Right. And we will bring back 
of the issues. Again, the discussion that we had at the council was a very simple one, and that is if there are needs in the neighborhoods, and, and certainly I think we talked about Central Street, uh, there was an infrastructure need, both Alderman Grover, Alderman Tendum had raised those issues, and we moved forward. There are infrastructure needs on Chicago Avenue, created by uh, the, the Trader Joe's creation. There are infrastructure needs, as we talked about in the Alderman Rainey's ward, uh, which are being funded by the TIF. Um, so we'd be happy to come back with a full discussion at your direction, Madam Chair. And there's in, there infrastructure needs in my war where there's nowhere to pull funds from, so, oh, yeah. so we all oh, yeah. have problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. and, and Alderman Grover, I'm not sure given the with the Thanksgiving holiday, perhaps we could come back the first meeting in January. All right. Well, that thank you. It'll be on thank the you. agenda. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Alderman Miller, you had a question about the budget. Yes. Uh, Marty, maybe you can help me out with the, the revised Howard Hartree TIF figures. All right, so we're starting with roughly nine hundred fifty thousand dollars in the in the the fund right now as we start, correct? And then there's a proposal to have to basically increase that to eight hundred thousand dollars more, give or take. So, are we assuming another eight hundred thousand dollars is going to be generated through the TIF this year? Yes. Based on we have revised projections that we didn't have from last time. No, we actually in the proposed budget we had a. Um, Ending balance of one million dollars, and we wish to spend that down because that TIF will close at the end of 2016. So basically, because if we're starting the year at a million dollars, we just didn't have that eight hundred thousand dollars projected at all. Or I mean, I'm just that is trying correct. to figure out. We, we actually had an estimate for the. Um, capital project that was an older estimate at $1 million. And after going through, we've had some changes in um, public works and our capital planning. We decided to update the dollars to $1.6 million. But if you look at the proposed budget document on the Howard Hartree TIF page, you'll see $1 million in there for capital improvements. And at the bottom of the fund is a fund balance of approximately $1 million. But, you know, I'm wondering where the 800000 is coming from. If we're, so you have uh, basically the, that fund balance. So in other words, we do not want to close the TIF with anything in it. So and it closes at the end of 2016. So we wish to spend those dollars down. We have a million. No, no, now. I'm not. I'm just wondering how the math works because if we have a starting fund balance according to this, this sheet of nine hundred fifty thousand dollars, right? We have the recommended budget cost of this is going to be about one point eight million, right? Yes. What page so, are you on, Alderman Miller? Th this is the, the handout that was... Right. The revised. Right. right. Okay. The revised handout. Got it. So, I'm sorry, because you just said two things, and maybe we're just getting confused where we're coming from. Are you assuming, so there's $1 million to start with at the, in, the, in the fund to begin the year. Mm -hmm. We're assuming $800,000 in additional TIF revenue for this year that wasn't budgeted before? No, it was budgeted before, and it fell all the way down into the end of 2016 fund balance, and then that would have had to have been distributed to all taxing bodies if it was not spent. Um, I, if, if you give me a second, I can bring up the uh, Oscar. Can you bring up the uh, um, budget from the web page, the website, and I can point out we're going to go to the Howard Hartree TIF, which easy. is. Well, that's, that's the next question too. Now, I'm just wondering where it's coming from to start with. It's coming. This is one of the most lucrative outside of downtown TIFs. It's coming from the increment. Right, but we then why didn't we have it budgeted originally until tonight at 1.8 million, basically? In revenue from it because it, we did not have a good enough estimate after discussing the total amount of improvements for the intersection improvement uh, we've been working on this for several years but Chicago has yet to come to the table and this year we decided we're at the last year we're doing more of the pavement reaching across the line a little bit well I'm answering your question no, where, no but that's the expenditure this... side I'm wondering about the revenue side and as I've said the revenues were always there in the budget. The revenues were in the proposed budget all along. So you had $1 million at the start of the year, $1 million in expenses, $1 million in revenues for the year. So you had a balanced budget for the year, and $1 million in fund balance just stayed in there year after year. And we're closing the TIF at the end of 2016, so we will have to distribute it if we do not spend it, and we have a use. So it's come from the fund balance. Uh, here's, like so we didn't the, have I accurate. I want the fund summary. I don't want this page. Can you cut the lights so we can see? Yeah. yeah. Oh, just tell me what page. Marty, is, is that include the reason why we're using that is because you did 
on Howard. They were reaching across Howard. I remember this from the TIF meeting, uh, the Board of Review meeting that we had, what, last week, week before last. Is that right there? Go ahead. Is that why, why we're taking that out to, to do the improvements, even though Chicago has not sat down with us? We're going to go ahead and do it that across is the street? Okay. So if I may, just to point out, I'm sorry, the text is a little bit small, but in the lower right-hand corner, this is the proposed budget where we only have the um, um, inner fund transfers of, mil of uh, 1152, and that is $1 million going to the capital improvements fund for the project and $152,000 going to the general fund for administration, which we do from all of our TIFs. And what we're suggesting is in the new budget, it will be um, 1, million nine hundred fifty-two um, thousand. So that will be adding the eight hundred thousand. And after you do that, then that lower right-hand number of one million one hundred six two seventy-three will drop down to approximately three hundred thousand um, dollars for a ending fund balance at the close of the tip. So above, I just call your attention to the um, total revenues: a million three budgeted. Uh, this last year, a million two forty-eight is the actual. So the TIF has been improving its assessed value base. Um, so we're projecting that as a revenue. So even if our revenues come in a little bit less, we will still have sufficient funds to do the capital project at one point six million to have two hundred thousand dollars available for any economic development activities that might occur, an incentive of any kind, um, support for rehab of, of any kind, uh, that, that's less likely this would really be for the development of one of the out parcels if that should occur. And that's the potential proposed use of the funds in this year, the $200,000? Yes. In, in 2016. Right. Yes. And the $300,000 then at the end and close of the TIF gets distributed to the other taxing mm -hmm. bodies? Correct. Alderman remaining. Well, our, I mean, the infrastructure improvements are not going to be spent in 2015. Isn't that correct? I mean, there's... I, uh, yes, I those, the, 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 the $2.5 in 2015, that's the um, um, auto barn. Right. But I'm talking about the infrastructure improvements. On the, I think those are really important items to discuss if we're going to even, I mean, regardless of whether you're talking about income or expenses. These, these improvements have been discussed for probably three or four years. And as a matter of fact, they were on the drawing board and people dropped the ball. And what it's going to include is a new traffic signal. Anybody who shops at this shopping center, a traffic signal at the easternmost um, entrance to the shopping center where people are trying to cross the street for the bus. It's going to include a sidewalk going into the shopping center where people currently have to walk on the street in the driveway. It's going to include a reconfiguration of the entry, the westernmost entry, which is an absolute nightmare. There is an intersection there where cars can go in four different directions. So these are not touchy-feely social service, uh, you know, let's plant a bush type uh, projects. These are hardcore, expensive projects, and I was bound and determined that this money would not be left in the till when this uh, TIF district expired. It has been a real significant contribution to the city of Evanston and, um, and to the surrounding Chicago and Lincolnwood and Skokie communities. So it, it, it couldn't be better spent, this money. It just couldn't be better spent. So um, I appreciate everyone's support, and I think, you know, the, these are the kinds of things that were discussed at the Board of Review meeting um, last week when we had the annual TIF discussion and um, you know, yeah. explanation. So, Alderman Miller, do you need to see this anymore? Okay. No. Any other questions? It's Any other comments on A6, which is our fiscal year 2016 budget? Um, I have one more thing yes, to say about Rainey. the budget. Um, I was a little disappointed in this year's budget because I always look forward to the budget. It's an opportunity to get your blood going and 
to play with some numbers and things. And I found it very difficult to play with any of our numbers this year. <laughs> that was kind of a letdown. But um, our staff just put together probably the best budget that I've seen, even though you know we don't have a lot of money and we couldn't add a lot of services. But it, it was one of the best budgets I've ever seen. It was simple, it was to the point, um, and um, I appreciate all your work given the mess we've got in Springfield. So just thank you very much for all you did. And you helped too, mm -hmm. Lily. <laughs> and to the extent that I, I guess budget, I can't yeah. I can't take this lead in without sort of the big asterisks, and that is really we're not done. Um, well, that 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 if you're looking if you're looking for fun to play with numbers, um, stay tuned. Right. Just it's wait. It's coming up in January, or February. Uh, I, I think uh, as I shared with the staff when we decided not to move forward with the furlough day, uh, our problems have been shifted. So uh, issues we were expecting in 2015 are not going to happen now, so they will happen to us in 2016. Uh, I think the council has outlined a, a good plan for us with the $1.5 million. It's a good start. Uh, it may not be enough, and we may be back to you sooner than we like uh, with additional changes. And, and asking your assistance for priority setting, uh, depending on what those final numbers are. So I wish we could say we were done this evening. Uh, but. Uh, uh, all we can say is that we, the city council will fulfill its legal obligation to adopt a budget on time. Um, and, okay. that's, and, and, that, and that unfortunately is saying something in the state of Illinois. So <laughs> right. thank you. Thanks thank you for ruining Robert. the mood. <laughs> so can we move this on to full council? Yes. All yes, in favor? Absolutely. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Mr. Lyons, do we have any other items for discussion? Is there anyone who signed up to speak? Committee? No speakers tonight. And we have no uh, um, items for discussion. No items for discussion. Or adjournment. Was that a motion, Alderman Absolutely. Holmes? Absolutely. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. We are adjourned.